Hi, this is Petey at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and today I wanted to go over briefly what a finite state machine is. Now we're going to be using finite state machines soon in our hack and slash tutorial, but I wanted to go over what a finite state machine is. A finite state machine is a mechanism that allows you to define a certain amount of states that your, your code can be in. Now this is a very dumbed down explanation of what a finite state machine is, but if you really want to dive into it, you could always Google it and, or search it up on Wikipedia and you'll get a much better definition. But for what I want to cover, that, that should be good enough. Now I like to think of finite state machines as a two part process. Uh, basically the first part is your states and the second part is the machine. Uh, let me open up Unity. I've created an empty project and I just thought I'd go through a very small example of what a finite state machine is to give a better understanding of what it is. So I'm going to create a script. Of course it'll be C sharp. And I'm just going to call this FSM for finite state machine. I'll open that up in mono development. Make sure to change the name. And I'm not going to use the update function. Now for your states, they're generally defined in a enumeration. So I'm going to say public enum and I'm going to use state with a capital S. It doesn't matter what you call it. And there's four basic states that I almost always start off with. Uh, it's going to vary from programmer to programmer, but I find I always end up including these four states in most things. The first one is called idle. Next, initialize. Set up. And what I refer to as actions. Now let's go over what these states represent. So the idle state. In the idle state, your program is just basically going to sit there and not do anything. Well, not quite not do anything. It's, it's waiting for the state to change so it can actually start doing what it's supposed to be doing based on the state that it's currently in. Now if that seems a little confusing, it will become a little easier to understand as we go along. Now the initialize state, if I spell it right, the initialize state is the state that I use to initialize everything that my engine is going to need to run. So for instance, I think of initialize as gathering all the nuts and bolts and the cogs and everything that it needs to you know, get going. And then in the setup state, I think of it as, you know, it puts all these nuts, bolts, and cogs together into other little, you know, parts that it's going to be using throughout the engine. So everything's set up and, you know, placed out in front of them, ready to go. And actions, actions really isn't just one state. There's usually several different states after this. So I might have something like, you know, display health as one action. Another action after that might be something like destroy enemy. And the list goes on and on as you know, many things as you need. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as action or actions. And let's start building the actual machine part of it. So it's generally constructed with a switch case block. So you have switch. And you're going to want to switch on some trigger. And let's set that trigger up right now. So I'm going to create a private variable. It's going to be of type state, which is our states that we're listing. And I'm just going to call it state with an underscore before it and a small s. Now this just represents the local variable that we're going to be using to keep track of our state. So this is the local variable that represents our state. And that's actually what we're going to be switching on. Now before you do that, you should set it to something. To start off with, I'm going to set mine to initialize, and you can do that just by going state equals then state dot 
initialize. So now that we have our state set to initialize, let's come back down here to our switch block and let's start setting up some cases for it to switch on. So the first one is going to be case and I'm going to use state with a capital S dot initialize and put a colon at the end of that and right away I put my break statement in and that'll become clear in a little bit so right now since our state is set to initialize when it comes to the switch block it's gonna go oh look our state is initialized so it's gonna run any code in between this colon and the break statement so let's just say we're just gonna call a function and I'll go create that function now and it will be a private it's not gonna return anything void and I'll just call it init me and I'm just gonna throw a debug log statement in there whoops I put a colon and I'll just debug out uh, this is the init me function and then come back up here into our case and I'll just call that function so if I were to save this off and run it make sure the console is open nothing would happen because I haven't actually attached the script or anything so I'm just going to throw it on the camera for now click make sure it's there and let's start it off and it just says this is the knit me function nothing that spectacular now let's make another case for our setup state so I'd come down here just type in case again state and select setup put a colon Right away, I put my break in. I'm going to make another function. Private void. Now set me up. And I'll just add another debug statement down here. So debug.log. This is the set me up function. And when I go to start the machine up, well, let's actually clear the text. You'll notice you get the exact same thing. So what's going on here? If we just look at these two states that we have set up, when it comes to your switch block, it looks at your locally stored state, which we have up here, which we set to state initialize. So when it comes down here, these cases, it looks to see what your, your stored state is. So we have it set to initialize. So it's going to come in here and run everything in here before the break. And all we have in there is just the init me. So it comes down here, prints this out, and then it just pops out of the, the switch statement because of our break. When it sees that break, it just gets out of the switch. And it comes down and we have nothing after the switch statement so the program you know the script just ends now if we wanted it to go to the setup state next at the end of the init me function we could actually just change the state so we could say our state is now equal to the state dot setup and now when we run it what do you think is going to happen and take a second pause the video and actually think about what we have typed out well, when we hit play, the exact same thing happens. So why does that happen? Well, it's because after it's done running the init me, which comes down here and just prints out our debug, then changes the state to setup, it breaks out. So it never actually reaches this one. If we wanted to reach this next state, we'd have to encompass this in some sort of loop where it would just keep looping forever. Now sometimes you'll see it set to, uh, you know, while true. You know, just loop forever. 
and let's just indent this. Now this will give us our desired effect, but it will probably lock up your machine. As you can see. So we don't want to do that. So let me start Unity back up. And a way to stop that is just come down here after your switch block and just simply type yield, return, and zero. And make sure you spell the yield right. Now, if you've done any work with coroutines in Unity or model development, you know, you'll, you'll probably recognize this. And in order to use it, you're going to have to make this start function return what's called an I enumerator. And now when you run it, it should not crash. So there we go. Uh, we forgot to actually add this method right here. We want to make sure it's calling that. So now when we start it up, we'll see that it just keeps printing, you know. Uh, this is the setup function, this is the setup function, blah, blah, blah. And we'll get the init, init me once. Now, of course, after this is done running, you can set the state to whatever you want after. So I could set the state to the next state in the list, which would be actions. And just like before, we'll want to create another case. And that case is going to be looking to see if it's equal to state actions. I'll put my break in right away. And then down here, I set up actions. Let's not actually call it action. Let's actually change its last state to something like combat. And my mouse wheel stopped working. There we go. So I'm just going to call this function combat as well. And in here, I'm going to make another debug statement. And we'll just say in combat. So now when we start it up, uh, once I fix all the errors, uh, I'm still trying to call actions right here. So now when we start it up, we forgot to tell it what function to call yet again. Well, I guess there's no we, it's just me. So when we start it up, pretty much exact same thing, except now it goes into combat. 